Hey, what's up guys? Thanks for stopping by the channel. So for this video, we're going to be checking out the latest pilot watch to come from the German manufacturer Archimede. And that is their Flieger 200, which I happen to have on the wrist. And this version of the Flieger 200 has a nice pop of orange on the tip of the seconds hand and on the stitching for the supplied leather strap. Moreover, that 200 nomenclature actually represents the watch's water resistance rating. And you're also getting an Eichler hardened steel case that has a black DLC treatment on top of that. So this watch is extremely scratch resistant. You can pretty much take it diving and it's very legible to boot. Now in terms of pricing for the Pilot 200 watch, this version comes in at just over 1100 euros, but that includes value added tax. So if you're like me in North America, you can actually purchase this watch and deduct the VAT. That brings the total price tag to just under 1000 euros. And at that price point, I think you're getting a very compelling pilot watch that can even hang with the big boys or more other notable German brands like the likes of Zdova, Zinn, or Damasco. Now I really would like to thank Archimede for loaning in this watch for the review. Sadly, I do have to return it after this video concludes. But for now, why don't we flip the camera around so you can actually take a close-up look at this Pilot 200 watch in the studio. So now that we're in the studio, we can actually take a closer look at this Archimede Flieger 200 watch. And before going over more of the dimensions and basic specs, I just wanted to do a quick comparison between this pilot watch and some other German Fliegers on hand. So on the right hand side here, this is a Stova Flieger Classic, which is slightly larger. It's a 40 millimeter case diameter. You can see the lug to lug is a little bit longer as well but you have that basic pilot watch characteristics on both in terms of the indices and the handset. And then if we move up just a little bit larger, I also have my Zinn 104. This is the limited edition Facebook group edition. Um, it's 41 millimeters in case diameter. Also has a countdown bezel and a bracelet option. But uh, just to give you a quick comparison side by side between the two, I do think the closer comparison for Zinn is going to be a 556i, which I've owned numerous variations of. Or if you switch it over, you could also take a quick look at the Damasco DS30. I think those two watches are going to be as close as it can get when you're looking at the specific layout in the same format as this Archimede Flieger 200 here. So the case for this watch is 39 millimeters in diameter. If you flip the watch to the side, um, the effective lug to lug distance between my thumbs here is only 45.3 millimeters. In terms of case thickness, I measure it at 10.7 millimeters. So actually very thin. That's from the bottom of the screw down case back, which you can also see has an exhibition sapphire crystal to the top of another flat sapphire crystal. Uh, the dial side here also has anti-reflective treatment, which is nice for good viewing angles, even under harsh lighting conditions. And I'll quickly mention too, that the lug opening for the supplied leather strap is at even 20 millimeters. This strap is actually really nice quality. It's well bolstered with that contrasting orange stitching and uh, it's 20 millimeters at the head of the watch, tapers down to about 18 millimeters as you get to the tail. And I wanna quickly show you guys the buckle because it's a PVD coated buckle, similar to the case with the Archimede branding, which is a nice touch. And here's a quick in-studio wrist shot, just to show you how this Pilot watch wears on a seven and a half inch wrist. That is 19, centimeters in circumference if you use the metric system. One thing I will point out though is that for my wrist size, which is a bit larger, th the strap is a bit short. I'm on currently 
the last hole for this pin buckle. And Archimede does claim that this will fit up to a 21 centimeter wrist circumference. And while that is technically true for the length of a strap, just the way they punched out the holes and these keepers here would make it probably unsuitable for somebody with a larger wrist size than mine. Which is a shame because this strap is actually phenomenal. And also I want to point out that this watch is an absolute strap monster. So you can definitely play with other straps. Or I'm really hoping that they release a PVD or DLC treated bracelet option as well. And I would like to emphasize, no matter what the wearing strategy you have, this watch is very comfortable on wrist and quite lightweight. It only weighs in at 65 grams on the supplied OEM leather strap. Now, like most Fliegers, most of this watch presents as dial real estate and the legibility on this watch is amazing. You're getting a nice matte black dial and highly contrast printing for the hour markers, minute track, handset, and even the minimal print. Now, the date window at the six o'clock position is nicely slept down and it's beautifully color matched in terms of the white printing for the actual date and the date disc matches the matte black of the dial perfectly. Now, I really like the broad sword style handset and you can actually note that there's no um, like silver surrounds or rhodium plated to those hands. They're purely stark white and they're hand painted with BGW9 Swiss Superluminova, as well as all of the uh, hash mark indices and even the running minute track is loomed up. So I'll show you guys a low light shot now because the loom on this watch is truly phenomenal and I do think it can rival a lot of other German Fliegers that are out there in terms of low light legibility. There is a nice pop of orange on the seconds hand. I do a kind of wish that there was some loom on the seconds hand, but I don't really think it's critical to gain orientation or read the time at a glance. Flipping the watch to the side, really it's pretty much just a matte um, DLC coated finish to this case. You do have an oversized seven millimeter crown and there is the A Archimede logo embossed on the side of the crown. This crown is not screwed down, so you can manually wind it in the uh, neutral position here. Um, if you pop it out to the first position, you can quickly cycle through the date at the six o'clock. And then if you pull out the crown to extremity, you can hack the balance and then set accurately to any reference time you like. Now I do want to reiterate that this watch is rated at 200 meters of water resistance. Even though the crown isn't threaded, it's really more about the seals and gaskets that will afford you 200 meters of water resistance. Would I take this watch diving? Probably not, but it's nice to know that the watch is specced that way. And I should mention that inside this watch beats an ETA 2824-2 automatic Swiss movement. And I really like watches that use the ETA over the Salita variations. That's just a personal preference by my part. And I do think that Archimedes regulates these watches because this watch shipped to me, I put on my time grapher. It was running at about plus three seconds per day with an insanely high amplitude and zero beat error. So, and I'll just quickly flip over the watch so you guys can see the exhibition case back. I think one of the options is you can actually get a DLC coated rotor with the Archimede branding on it as well. In terms of potential points for improvement, I mean, I'm really just going to be nitpicking and talking about what I would like to see in the future. One would be a longer strap that comes with this particular watch. Um, that, or it would be really nice to offer like a DLC treated bracelet option because they're normal Fliegers come on a very nice fine link bracelet, which I really enjoy wearing. And then even though it's not really necessary, I would love to see a fully loomed seconds hand just so this watch truly lights up at a torch at night. But overall, I really enjoy this Flieger 200 watch to come out of Archimede. It's actually one of my favorite models that I've reviewed on this channel. And I really would like to thank them for lending in this watch for the video. And as always, if you guys have thoughts or comments about this particular timepiece, be sure to drop them in the comment section of this video. And if you do enjoy my content, please consider subscribing to the channel. It helps out a ton.
So that's going to wrap up this one, guys, and I can't wait to catch you in the next video.